Hi everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Thanks for joining me. This video is going to be all about creating simple silhouette ombre die cuts. I have several cards to share today, all created using dies from the Little Loves collection by Sharon Sowell, but other silhouette dies can be easily used to make similar cards. I'm going to start working on my projects by die cutting a bunch of silhouettes out of white cardstock. This is Nina Solar White, 110 pound, and I'll also later use yellow and green colored cardstock for some of the silhouettes. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting and embossing machine. This is the machine that I always use for my die cutting. I rarely show it in the videos because I like to keep it off to the side. It's a big and powerful machine and it cuts like butter. So here I have a few of the silhouettes from the Little Loves collection by Sharon. First up is the first Friends die, and this one is about three inches wide. Next up I have Little Boys at Play, and this one is about five and a half inches wide, and I will recut this later out of green cardstock. This one is quite wide, it's a bit too wide for an A2 card, especially if you want to use it on a portrait card and not on a landscape, but you can easily use just parts of this scene or this die cut for your project, so just snip the boys on the left or the boy with the dog on the right and use that portion of the die cut. Next I have a Way We Go die cut, this one is also a wider one, a little over 5 inches wide, and I'll recut it later out of yellow cardstock. There are 10 dies in the Little Loves collection and all of them are silhouettes like this. Sharon Sowell is famous for her hand-cut silhouettes and she has a lot of different scenes with the silhouettes to play with. She also has some Christmas silhouette dies and I used some of those for my Christmas cards last year. Next up I have Baby's Birthday and this one is super tall. It's almost 5 inches tall, so a nice size for an A2 card. This one is also a very detailed die. You have all of the chair back detail and the little cupcake detail here as well. To add some color to my die cuts, I'm going to do simple ombre ink blending using Avery L pigment inks. You can use any other kind of ink you like. I'm a longtime fan of the Avery L pigment inks, although I haven't used them much, or I should say I haven't shared them much on my YouTube channel, but I've been loving these inks for a long time. Here I have an easy clean mat from Tonic Studios. I'm going to use this mat to protect my surface to do my ink blending on. This mat has a no sleek surface on the back, so it stays put on your desk and there's no need to tape it in place like the Ranger mat. I'm going to use two colors of ink for each of my die cuts. Here I have raspberry and pixie inks, and I'm blending these onto the die cut using my Ranger mini ink blending tools. These inks blend very easily, they are very creamy, so my wrist doesn't get as tired when I blend these with the mini ink blending tools as it does when I blend regular distress inks or dye inks, for example. You can also stamp with these Avery L pigment inks, and I did that in a video that I shared recently featuring a Mother's Day card, and I will link it in the YouTube card right here in case you'd like to go and check it out. I used two color blends for my die cuts, and here you can see me blending yellow. I didn't like in the end how the yellow color looked, so I ended up recutting this die cut out of yellow cardstock and blending dark yellow ink at the bottom of the die for the slight ombre. It's hard to see in the photos as it looks just like a one solid yellow color, but there is a little bit of yellow ombre to it. Next, I blended the boy scene using greens, with the darker green at the base of the die cut and the lighter green at the top. You can also do more elaborate ink blending or even coloring and color each element of the silhouette in its own color. You can doodle a black outline around it, you can watercolor this or use your pencils to color it. Adding an ombre ink blending is just one of the ways, I think it's the easiest way to add some color to these die cuts. And of course you can also keep them white if you like. And lastly I blended the final die cut using teal or blue colors and this one ended up being my favorite of all. And by the way I have all of the colors of ink that I'm using today listed in the video description and also on my blog in the blog post associated with this video. And you'll also be able to find the names of the stamp sets that I will later use to add sentiments to these cards. 
I already finished one of the cards using my ink blended die cuts and I used the every day is a happy day die cut for this one. And I just incorporated part of it here as this is also a larger, a longer or a wider die cut. I die cut a pretty background for my card using this simple gotta have gingham six by six paper pad by Lawn Fawn. If you don't have this particular paper pad, you can also stamp a background like this using a plaid or gingham background stamp. And Simon Says Stamp has a background stamp like this. And using a stamp will actually let you stamp your background multiple times if you want to mass produce these cards. It will also allow you to use any color of ink you like. Here I am just flipping through the pad, the paper pad, and trying to pick the best colors for my die cuts. I used my Spellbinders scored and pierced rectangles die and I die cut panels for each of my card. I also embossed them. I made sure to tape my die in place when cutting to make sure that it would not shift and the cut would be parallel to the printed lines on the paper. I also die cut a few additional pieces to embellish these cards using some of my other dies. And here I use some leaves and some flowers from Blooming Garden Collection by Marissa Job. And this collection is also releasing this month, in addition to the Little Loves Collection, where the silhouette dies come from. You can definitely use pre-made embellishments, maybe some pre-made flowers or stamp and die cut some flowers out. I wanted to keep these cards all die cut in besides I don't have any pre-made florals in my stash. This is not something that I use. So I just used the dies that I had on hand and I made my own flowers. Again, this is not something that I do very often, but you know, I kind of enjoy doing that. I also already picked sentiments for my cards and I wanted to make sure to have big and bold messages for each of my projects to accompany the die cuts. These little silhouettes are wonderful to make family type cards. So a Mother's Day card, a Father's Day card, a reunion card, or a birthday card, things like that. Here I'm using a circle birthday stamp from the Circles Saying stamp set from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm stamping it onto a light gray background in black ink. Next I'm using tape and white fun foam, and I'm going to foam mount this background onto an A2 white side folding card base. And if you know me, you know that I love to add dimension to my cards and fun foam along with a foam adhesive is the way to do it. I'm also foam mounting the pink ombre die cut onto the background and I'm cutting my foam squares into smaller pieces to be able to hide them under the die cut. You'll want to foam mount the die cut onto the card and not adhere it flush as that foam mounted dimension will help you separate the die cut from the background by adding a slight shadow around it. So it will make it more visible and more prominent on your project. I'm also adding some leaves and here you can see me shaping the flower petals with my fingers. I'm also going to add some color to the inside of my flowers with the same raspberry ink that I use for my ink blending and a mini ink dubber. And I'm using an ink dubber here because it's smaller in size, smaller in diameter than my Ranger ink blending tool. So it will only add the ink to the inside of the flower layer. I'm stacking three layers of flower petals here and I'm using glue to adhere them in place and also using glue to adhere the leaves. This card also needs some enamel dots. So I'm going to add some by using my Nuvo Drops in Carnation Pink. I pre-made some yesterday. I just added the Nuvo dots onto a sheet, or a used sheet from the foam adhesive squares. And I can just go ahead and pick them up because they've had the time to dry. So they're nice and hard now. So I can just pick them up and adhere onto the card. You can also add dots directly onto the card if you like. And I do do that here too, especially if I need larger size dots. But for the teeny tiny dots, I'm picking them up from the sheet. I'm moving them onto the card and adhering them using glue. So you can use Nuvo drops in different ways, whichever way works for you. Here, I also wanted to show you how I stamped the sentiment onto this teal silhouette card. I placed both the background and the die cut into my mini Misty. I taped the die onto the background so that it would not move in case I needed to double stamp the sentiment. So I stamped the sentiment first over the die cut and you can see that it's stamped a bit on the background, but I did not press too hard to have a transfer onto the background in one go as that would have just over stamped it on the die cut and it would not have stamped it well enough on the background. I removed the die cut and I stamped it onto the background. Next, I'm going to use foam adhesive and we'll simply foam mount 
the die cut with a partially stamped sentiment on top. And when I do that, it will still continue to look like one legible sentiment. I white heat embossed happy and blow out the candle messages onto black cardstock. I trimmed them into strips and adhered onto the card to complete it. I also added green leaves here, but looking at this card now, I think that wasn't such a good idea, you know? The card would have looked better without them, as they kind of feel odd there. Maybe if I added a third leaf or a leaf in a third spot, that would have looked better. But I don't think that the leaves add much to this card. I'm not going to remove them as I used glue to adhere them in place. But if I were to remake this card, I would not add the leaves there. I also used Nouveau Drops in Caribbean Ocean and added a few teal drops to embellish this card. Here I recut the other die cut out of yellow cardstock and I'm blending the yellow pigment ink onto the bottom part of it to turn it into an ombre die cut. You can keep it as is, certainly, but I think that adding that ombre effect makes these die cuts look a bit more interesting. This is also a longer die, so to make sure it would fit on my card, I used my paper trimmer and I just trimmed it to have three out of the four children here, or three out of the five children. I'll use the other two kids on another project later. And you can cut it with your scissors if you like, or use the paper trimmer like I did here. Once again, I'm stamping the sentiment in black ink, and for this card, I'm going with a thank you message. It reads, thank you for lending a hand. And I think this is so appropriate for this card. The kids are holding hands, and it's just a sweet little scene. I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink for all of my stamping today, as this is my go-to ink for stamping sentiments. I foam mounted the die cut onto the background, foam mounted the background onto an A2 side folding card base, and I also taped some twine around this card. It's been ages since I used twine for my projects, but I love to use it. So here I pulled out my yellow twine from Zittlebog, and I just added it around the card and tied it into a little bow. I did poke a hole in the card fold to be able to thread it through, but if you make a top folding card, you won't have to do this as you'll just be able to wrap it around the front panel of the card. I added flowers and leaves just as before and embellished it using same Nouveau drops in pink. I also made a Father's Day card here and I stamped to the absolute best dad and I used a black Kobach marker to fill the open space in the letters that spell out dad. By doing this, I made this sentiment that much more prominent on the background. Again, I foam mounted everything in place. I added some leaves, some twine, and Nouveau drops and called this card done. So here is a quick look at all of the projects that I'm sharing today, created using dies from the Little Loves collection by Sharon Sowell. I had fun playing with these dies, and I can see myself using them again and again in the future. Now, I should mention that I work for Spellbinders as an in-house creative designer, but nobody asked me to film this video. I filmed it and made these cards because I wanted to and because I think that these dies are rather cool. So this finishes my video. I hope you guys feel inspired to create. Thanks so much for watching as always. If you have questions, leave them in a the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet done so. If you are a subscriber but are not receiving new video notifications, Check the bell icon on the homepage of my channel to get notified every time there's a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.